Good morning, church. Can we give it up for Jesus, everybody in here? Oh, no. Can we for real give Jesus some praise this morning, everybody, because he is worthy of all of our praise and worthy of all of our admiration. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for being here on this hot Sunday. Uh, you know, hey, it's been pretty mild this summer, so we should thank the Lord at, the, at this time that we haven't had a 100-degree day yet, but they are coming. But thank you so much for being here with us this morning. If you're watching online with us this morning, thank you for watching with us. If y'all would do me a quick, huge favor... If you would go to High Ridge Church Mineral Wells, uh, our Facebook page, and share the stream, your share could be somebody meeting Jesus in their living room. And so we are all about that. So please, please, please uh, share the stream. If you're watching online, if you could share that as well. Uh, man, last week was incredible. Uh, night of worship was amazing. And and I, I don't know if you're in here the, tonight, uh, this morning or not, but uh, the other night we had our kids' night of worship going on. And we had some workers that missed out on our night of worship to do kids night of worship so can we give them a round of applause just for raising up the next generation and strengthening these kids for life and so thank you so much for your continued generosity we had 11 baptisms last week life change happening and you get to be a part of it because of your faithfulness in the area of giving hey I want to let y'all know that membership is coming up on August the 1st, next week, if you have not ever been to our membership class, please, 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 today, sign up at HighRidgeMW.com or through our app. We would love for you to take that next step um, in the growth track and, and, and become a member and officially call yourself a Hyridgian for life, all right? So uh, make sure that you get signed up for that. We would love for you to see what we're all about, what we value, what our vision is, all those good things. Um, quickly, uh, we have a serve day coming up on August the 21st. Praise the Lord. We are going to be able to bless 300 kids. Can we give it up for the Lord, everybody? 300 kids. Um, we're going to be able to provide them with shoes. Within hours of posting it last week, within hours, we I, knew, I don't even know where we're at right now, but within hours of posting it, we already had 60 kids registered within a few hours of making the post. And so um, that being said, we need your help. And we on August 21st, it's from 9 to 3. It's a Saturday. If you can sign up to serve at HighRidgeMW.com, we're praying and believing for 50 to 60 of y'all to come in here and to love on these kids and show them the love of Jesus. But also, if you know anybody that is in need or could use um, this blessing, please have them sign up through our Facebook page. It's not through our um, website, but it's through the organization that we're partnering with. And you can find that on my Facebook page or our church Facebook page. So if there are in need, please, please sign up. Uh, lastly, uh, announcement is this, is prayer and fasting is August 8th through 11th. And I don't know about you, but I get so excited uh, about those days. Why? Because we really, really press in and we are in walking in anticipation of what the Lord could do in our life. I don't know if you were the one in January, but it was powerful and it kicked off the year with the vengeance. And so we want to, to invite you to that. It's going to be every night, Sunday through Wednesday. There'll be kids ministry on Sunday night and Wednesday night and uh, Monday and Tuesday. Your, or your kids will join in here with us. But man, please mark it on your calendar. It is going to be nothing short of of incredible and it's going to kick off the fall semester in the right way. So please, 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 I would love to see every single one of your beautiful smiling faces there um, all of those nights. Hey, so we uh, aren't doing a series currently right now. I get a few weeks where um, I get to preach what I want. So, you know, y'all got to watch out for that because, you know, I get excited about those weeks uh, at times because, man, just the, the we everything we've been so good and I really, really loved at the core. But I also love the opportunity to get to, to speak what God is, is speaking. So last week I talked about uh, the change I crave and we talk about all the cravings that we have, but a lot of us are unwilling to change what we are doing. Uh, we are seeking um, this appetite, this spiritual, appetite, but we're unwilling to change and we're set in our ways. And so as I was um, praying and asking the Lord what to, to speak on uh, this week, he reminded me of a time um, before I worked in ministry. It was actually my last job before I was uh, my last secular job before I stepped into vocational ministry full-time eight years ago. And, and so 
Um, I was, you know, done with the retail life. I'd worked at Sam's Club. I'd worked at Costco. Had um, I was in the military, and I was in school, and, and I was doing all these different things. And I had a, a medical assistant license uh, at the time, and so I was like, you know what? Um, I'm gonna go uh, into the medical field again, and and I want just I want a job. I just want to help people. Like right now, I just want to be able to make a difference in people's lives, and I just really, really want to help people since I can't do it full time yet um, with the church. I want to just help people. Well, I ended up getting a job doing med transport for a company that uh, had group homes for um, patients with developmental disabilities. And so we had about 60 different clients um, that lived in our group homes, and I was responsible for all of their doctor's appointments and all of their medications. And, and it was a lot, a lot of a lot of work. I partnered with our RN and LVN um, as they handled their day-to-day care, but I was responsible for making sure they got to their appointments and got all of their medications that they needed. And so um, I found out very quickly that this was not a easy job that it was not easy at all. In fact, I could tell you story after story uh, of different crazy things that I never thought would happen in my life, whether it had been um, you know, episodes at doctor's appointments or in the car and just crazy things getting hit and things thrown at me and just all kinds of different things. But um, what I didn't think was gonna happen was this. See, I expected to go into the situation and to help these people that needed help in life, right? I I expected to have to help them. What I did not expect was for them to change my life. See, I expected to make a difference in their life, but I did not expect them to make a difference in mine. So, uh, you know, I I remember working with one of our clients, his name was Tommy, and, uh, you know, he wasn't in our group home, but you all know that little line on the job description that says, in any other task that you are asked, that, that, that was one of these items. And so while it wasn't a, a medical thing, I, uh, they needed me to, he still lived at home with his sister, but he needed to, a relationship. He needed somebody to look up to. He needed somebody to, to, to do life with and to, to have somebody that has conversation and have fun with. It just wasn't his family. And, and I, I just loved Tommy to death. And uh, I used, every Tuesday we would, we would go, um, we would, we, you know, we'd go hiking, we would go bowling, we would go, um, fishing, we would go play mini golf. I would take him to get food that he wasn't supposed to have. And, and in fact, you know, like, hey, um, he, w- he just always told on me, you know? Always. Like, he, he, he's like, hey, you know, he'll tell his sister, like, you know, like everything that, you know, like, hey, bro, I'm trying to, you know, have a good time with you. And I remember one time I was like, hey, he's like, will you get me a cookie, Ryan? I said, bro, last time I got you a cookie, you told on me I got, you know, I got in a little bit of trouble. They're trying to keep you off the cookies um, to help you lose a little weight. Like, so, and, and I was like, and you told on me, you know, like, he was like, if you get me a cookie, Ryan, I haven't had a cookie like in a month. If you get me a cookie, Ryan, I won't tell her, I promise. I promise I won't tell her. You know, he, he, my heart was like, you haven't had a cookie in a month, bro. You haven't had a cookie in a month. I got to go get you a cookie. And like, I got to go get you a good one from the mall, you know, like, so. And, and so he ate a cookie and then, I kid you not, the second I drop him off. Hi, Ryan, thanks for the cookie right there in front of his sister. See you later. And so, man, uh, what I didn't realize is how attached and how much I began to love Tommy. Oh, I had another guy named Daniel, and he was a, he was a harder case, and, and he was difficult to work with at times. But um, for some reason, he really, really liked me, and I had an attachment to him. And while everybody else would be like, you know, like, arguing over like who's going to take him to a doctor's appointment because he just did not like to leave home or who was going to take him to a place. To, I always volunteered to take him because I just had a relationship with him. So I went into this situation. And I can tell you story and story and story of things that happened in my life working this job for two and a half years. Um, but I went into this job expecting to make a difference in their lives. But what God did is through them, he made a difference in my life. And see, here's the thing. What I didn't realize at the time, even though I expected to make a difference in their life, what I didn't realize is that God was preparing me for ministry. I had to learn patience for people. I had to learn to be understanding. 
I had to learn life was difficult at times. And the Lord was like, if you can pass this test, if you can navigate through this, you can do this ministry thing, but right now you're doing ministry, you just don't see it. See, I expected to make a difference in their life, but I didn't expect for God to use them to completely transform my life. My wife will constantly ask me, she's like, how do you just remain so patient? How do, like, how do you not get mad so like, um, easily? Like, it takes a lot for me to get angry. It, it really, really, really does. It's like the Lord just has helped me in that area of my life. But see, here's the thing. All of us in the room, we have expectations. Some of us have low expectation. Some of us have high, something that God doesn't have for us. And so today, what I want to talk to you about is raising your expectation. Raising your expectation. John Maxwell says this, the primary limitation in life is our low expectations for ourselves and others. When we expect minimum results, that's usually what we get. What's the definition of expectation? It's a strong belief in that something will happen or be the case in the future. So what is your expectation today? Do you expect God to move in your life? Do you expect God to do something big in your life? Do you expect breakthrough to happen? Do you expect God to use you in a profound way? What is it that you expect and are you walking in expectation of what the Lord could do? So if you would bow your heads and close your eyes, I'm gonna pray for this uh, this morning. My hope today is that we will raise our expectations of what God wants to do in our lives. Lord, I just pray right now that we would raise our expectation, that we'd be a people that walk in expectation of what you could do in our lives and to those around us, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would move in a profound way it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm gonna dive right in this morning, Acts 3, verses one through eight. Acts 3, verses one through eight. It says, one afternoon, Peter and John went to the temple for the three o'clock prayer. And as they came to the entrance called the beautiful gate, they were captured by the sight of a man crippled from birth, being carried and placed at the entrance of the temple. He was often brought there to beg for money from those going to worship. Then he noticed Peter and John going into the temple and he begged them for money. Peter and John looking straight into the eyes of this crippled man said, look at us expecting a gift. He readily gave them his attention. Then Peter said, I don't have money, but I'll give you this. By the power of the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. Peter held out his right hand to the crippled man as he pulled the man to his feet. Suddenly, power surged into his crippled feet and ankles. The man jumped up, stood there for a moment, stunned, and then began to walk around. As he went into the temple courts with Peter and John, he leapt for joy and shouted praises to God. You see, this man had the wrong expectation. See, he had been crippled from birth. And every time there was a prayer, every time there was a church service, he was brought to this front gate to ask for money, to ask for food, to ask for clothes. He had his sights on temporary things and God wanted him to live and all he wanted to do was survive. A lot of us in here, we find ourselves in this place. God wants you to live, and all you want to do is survive. All you want to do is get by, and we need to stop hoping to survive and allow God to walk in our lives and to be present in our lives. See, while this man, he had an expectation for God, to do something in his life and it wasn't a big thing, it was a small thing. It wasn't the best expectation, but I wanna tell you today, church, that God can move in your life if you have just a little bit of expectation. 
If you just expect him to show up, he can get past everything that's there, everything that's in your life, everything that you're doubting, your little faith. He can move forward if you move in expectation. So do you know that it's okay to want more? Do you know that? If it's from God, do you know it's okay to want more? You should want more for your life and you should want more for others. But we have to be a church that's willing to walk in expectation. So I want to give us five ways that we should walk in expectation today. The first one is this. After Romans 8, 25, it says this. But if we hope for what we do not see, through perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. The first thing is this. We should expect God to move. We should expect God to move. Some of us are just okay with getting by. Some of us are just okay and content with our relationship with God. We're like, this is the way it is. It's the way it's always been. And it's how it'll always be. But what saddens me when I've seen, and not just our churches, all churches throughout uh, the Big C Church, is we have a lot of faithful people. And what I mean by that is we have a lot of faithful people that are here every Sunday, that they're highly involved, that they are um, you know, creating this routine in their life and, and they're very, very faithful. But I want you to know today, church, that you can be faithful and be faithless. You can be faithful and be faithless. What do I mean by that? You can, you can be present. You can, you can be there. You can check off the routine, but you can still not walk in expectation. You can still have little faith. You can still not believe in for the things of God. You can still think, hey, I've got this covered. I can figure this out. I can do this. I can do this. I can do that. I can take care of my marriage. I can get freed from this addiction. I can restore this relationship. I can take care of my finances. I, I, I. And we don't allow God to move because our faith is low. You can be faithful and be faithless. And we have to walk in expectation and allow God to move in our life. Look at this man at the gate. What just happened here is not talked about enough. We have a crippled man He hasn't been able to walk since birth. And he was just expecting to get by and then God showed up on the scene. See, this man could not walk. He could not take care of himself. But then God showed up. I need to tell you today, church, is that oftentimes myself included, and I know if it's me sometimes, that it's you too, we're that crippled man. We sit there, we're present, we're asking for the wrong things, we're not walking in expectation, and somewhere along the line, God has lifted you up and he's restored you, he's gave you new life and he's allowed you to stand, and yet we are not in walking in expectation of what else he could do in our life. We're completely content with where it started. What happened here completely transformed this man's life, and it can transform yours too. So do you expect God to move? Philippians 1.20 says this, For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. The second thing is this, is we should expect to live for Christ. See, your relationship with Christ shouldn't end with your salvation. I think some of you need to hear that again. Your relationship with Christ should not end with your salvation. If your relationship with Jesus just ended with a prayer and stopped there, if you truly gave your heart to Jesus, praise the Lord, that is a fantastic decision and your eternity is set. But why on earth would you wanna live the rest of your life here on earth without walking in relationship with him? Christ should be alive in us. Instead, unfortunately, a lot of us have him hidden deep inside. Some of us are just surviving. Just like the man at the gate. We're completely content with surviving. And God has called you to live. 
God doesn't want you just to survive. He wants you to live. Here's something that's crazy. You may have not thought about this way before, but you're like, hey, Ron, that's great and all, but that's easy for you because you're a pastor to, to live for Christ. I promise you, it's not. I promise you. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. What you don't realize is that God has called you to lead in the same capacity that I'm leading. What do I mean by that? Your platform looks different than mine. Some of your platforms is a truck. Some of your platforms is a trailer. Some of your platforms is a desk. Some of your platforms is a cash register. Some, pla- some of your platforms are behind a, behind a coffee stall. So, some of your platforms are working behind a desk. I don't know what it is, but God has given you a platform. It just looks a little bit different than a stage. And God has given you a capacity to lead and a capacity to love others. We should expect to live for Christ. We shouldn't just expect to get by. This man at the gate expected just to get by. That's all that he wanted. Let me just get by. Let me just get another day of food. And then God completely wrecked his life. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says this, listen to the truth I speak to you. Whoever says to this mountain, with great faith and, and does not doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and believe that what he says will happen and it will be done. The third thing is this, we should expect for God to use us. We should expect for God to use us. This is the crazy part. Not only does God want to save us, he wants to use us, but we have me? How could God use me? How, look, do you know what I've done, Ryan? Do you know what I did in the past? Do you, do, you, do you know how I've hurt people? Do you know what I did? I ask myself the question every single day. But God loves to use broken people. God loves to restore people. You see, the gospel is not fix yourself and then come to Jesus, right? The gospel is come as you are and make yourself available to him. And he wants to use you because your story is someone else's victory. Your story is powerful. What you've been through, somebody needs to hear it. God wants to use us. God wants to use us. But instead... Some of us are just okay with getting by. You know, in my life, I was in a place in my life for four years where I just didn't think that I could be used by God. I I did everything possible to try to disqualify myself. And I tried to do every single thing on earth to rationalize why I shouldn't be doing and living for God. And I tried to make myself happy. Whole other sermon right there. I tried to be happy. And you know what? I was miserable. I was miserable because I was living for me. I was living for me. And God has called you to live for him. And we should have big expectation. We should should expect to live for Christ. We should expect for God to use us. We shouldn't be just trying to get by. Imagine if I just tried to get by. What if I showed up here on Sunday morning and I didn't have a message prepared and I was like, you know what? You know what? Like, hey, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to speak on today? And I just opened the Bible when I came up here and hopefully it doesn't take me like to, to Leviticus or Numbers or something like that. That's really hard to preach out of, right? First of all, that wouldn't pastor you very well. Second of all, I probably wouldn't be here for very long and neither would you. But God wants to use you. God wants to use you and he wants to use you in a big way. Imagine what this guy's life looked like after the transformation happened. Imagine what it probably did. Do you think he was like, 
man, cool, I can walk now. No, he was excited. Look, I can walk. I've never been able to walk in my life. I've watched all these people walk by me and walk past me and, and give me a cold shoulder and not give me money and, and look at me like I'm weird, but now I can walk. That's the same reaction that we should have because you are this crippled person. You were numb to yourself. You were blind. You could not see. You could not walk. You were deaf. You could not hear. You had all these things wrong with you, but then Jesus had an encounter with you that completely transformed your life, that told you to get up and to start moving and to go out and to live life. We are this man, and we should walk in expectation of what God could do in our life. Proverbs 24, 14 says this, for then you will perceive what is true wisdom. Your future will be bright and this hope living within you will never disappoint. The fourth thing is this, we should expect hope. We should expect hope. See, Jesus is the answer to hope. Do you have him? Do you have hope? For a lot of us in the room, we're having a hard time finding it and it's because you don't expect it. I wanna ask you today, what happened to your hope? Where is it at today? Where is your hope? Is it in Jesus? Is it in God's word? Or is it in you? Is it what I can do? Is it what I bring to this situation? Because hope is found right here. And we can see it Genesis through Revelation. We can see God in the garden with his kids that he loved. We can see God delivering the Israelites into the promised land. We can see God, he delivered Noah from a flood and rescued him. We can see God who said, had David slay a giant. We can see God bring hope to Paul when there was no hope. He was a murderer. He was headed for destruction and he was trying to bring destruction to the name of Jesus and God completely transformed his life. We see Peter, the same guy that denied Jesus three times. He had no hope. He was just a fisherman and then he betrayed the son of God, but yet God still encouraged him and said, Peter, I love you. And he was in the upper room when the Holy Spirit poured out the same Peter that was nowhere to be found when Jesus was on the cross. I see hope all through this Bible, but you say, what about me? You say, what about me? It's easy, you can read it right there. Where's my hope? Where's where's my breakthrough? Where's my miracle? I saw this happen in another person's life, why can't it happen in mine? I can't believe This person got what I've been praying for for the last few years. And we don't even realize that the enemy's at work and your hope is just shrinking and shriveling. You know why that is? What I just said was a lot of I, 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 me, 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 I, where's mine, where's this, where's mine, where's this. We sound like toddlers. We do. But the problem with that mindset is this. And I'm telling you, I've been there. I still struggle with this at times, so I know you do too. When we say all of these things, we are putting ourselves unintentionally in the place of God. Where's mine at? Where's this at? When's this coming? And we put ourselves in that position. And it's the wrong place to be. And we got to reposition. And then when we put God first, you will find hope. Look, look at this man. The Bible's full of hope. Look what happened with this man. He had no hope. And now he was completely restored. Romans 8, 19 says this. I love this translation and I, and I, and I love this, this verse right here. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. The fifth thing is this, we should expect to make a difference. The vision at High Ridge Church 
is to strengthen people for life, to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and to make a difference. But here's what I love about this verse. You could easily translate it this way. The entire United States of America, the entire state of Texas, all of Palo County, all of Mineral Wells, Santo, Palo Pinto, Grayford, surrounding areas, Millsap, is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you are God's sons and daughters. You are the answer. You are the carriers of hope. But if we are walking in expectation as sons and daughters, what is the world supposed to do? You see, I see in the world right now, there's not a whole lot of hope. All you have to do is look on social media. We live in a society that has no hope. And what this verse is telling us is in times of crisis, times of pandemics, the world is looking. See, they've heard about this guy, Jesus. We live in a country where I venture to say probably every single person that is here has heard the name Jesus, whether they're a believer or not. Praise God for that. And, they, and a lot of them can quote the Bible better than you can. And so they are watching as this stuff is unfolding. And they're looking at you with how they're going to respond. So are you expecting for God to break through? Are you expecting for God to do something big? Are you expecting for God to show up? Or are you just trying to insert your own expectation on a situation? Man, I I completely expect um, them to make the wrong decisions. I completely expect uh, them to to carry this on. I completely expect to put the wrong person in office. I completely, where's your expectation at? See, that's little faith. This world needs hope. And you can make a difference. Your story is someone else's victory. God brought you to this earth. 2021, July 24th, you are here right now. And the only reason he didn't zap you to heaven the second you received him is to make a difference right now. To point people to Jesus But do we even expect to do that? Do we think it's even possible that God could use somebody like us? I want to tell you that people need to hear your story. People need to hear about your failed relationships. People need to hear about your past addictions. People need to hear about your struggles. We need to be transparent. We need to be honest. We need to bring some things out of the dark and bring them into the light so the enemy can't hold them against us anymore, but also so they'll strengthen others. We are called to strengthen others. But for some of us, we can't get past our own expectation. And some of us are really faithful, but we are walking around faithless. Where's your faith at today? Where's your faith at? What are you believing in? Ephesians 3.20 says this, and I'll close. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all. For this miraculous power constantly energizes you. So what does your relationship with Jesus look like today? Are you expectant for him to do more in your life? Or are you completely content with where you're at? Are you completely content with sitting down, waiting for someone to show up? Here's what I love about this story. Peter and John are walking on the scene. They see this guy that they don't know. And they say, bro, get up, start walking, go live life, live life abundantly, be blessed. The faith they had, and they had just received the power of the Holy Spirit one chapter before. 
They're on a journey very new without Jesus. You know, it was one thing for them to do life with Jesus, but now Jesus is now on the scene and to walk in that type of faith. What kind of expectation did they have? Listen, you have the same authority and power that they did. And there are people all around this city and in this nation that are sitting there waiting for the sons and daughters of the most high God to say, get up, I've got something for you. I don't have silver and gold. I don't have all the finances. I don't have all the money in the world, but I got something that you desperately need. And Jesus doesn't want you to sit down crippled anymore. He wants you to get up and he wants you to live. Where are the sons and daughters at that are willing to to say, get up, come alongside me. I'll live life with you. I'll help walk with you. I'll help bring restoration with you. I won't judge you. I won't condemn you. I won't bring shame on you. Instead, I'm gonna love you even through your deficiencies. We should be a church that loves people. And we should be a church that expects God to move in every situation. And God wants to move in your life. Some of you, God is calling to be Peter and John. He's telling you to raise your faith and start picking people up. And some of you, God is saying, hey, you're expecting just to survive and I've called you to live and I've got more for you. If you would bow your head and close your eyes, I'm out of time this morning. If you're in here today and you say, man, I really haven't thought about that. I really haven't given that a whole lot of thought. I've been sitting here my whole life not realizing there was more. And I just want to stand up. I want to stop just surviving and I want to get up. Maybe you're in here this morning and you say, I want to have faith like Peter and John. If it was me, if I'm being honest, I might just have passed that man by. I just might have walked by. I may have not just given it at the time of day. And I want that to change. And I want to walk in expectation that God can restore and free anybody from any situation. So if you find yourself in one of those places today, would you just raise your hand? I want to raise my expectation. I want to raise my expectation. Just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to raise my expectation of what God can do in my life. Hands all over the room. Lord Jesus, I just pray right now that you would raise our expectation of how you can move in our life that we'd walk with the power of God, sharing our story, meeting people right where they're at, but also raising our expectation of what you can do in our life. Everybody can put their heads down, all about heads bowed down, no one looking around. If you say, Ryan, that's awesome and all, but I don't know that I've ever accepted Jesus. I don't know that I know that I know that I would spend eternity in his heaven if I were to die today. And I want to settle that today. I want to know that I am his and he is mine. And I want to walk with Jesus the rest of my days. If that's you today, Jesus can rescue you right now. So if that's you today, pray this with me, friend. Jesus, I trust you. I give you my life. I give you my heart. Thank you for dying for me. And thank you for just now saving me. Now, with no one looking around, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. If you just accepted Jesus, I want to celebrate with you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. Just look at me. Give me a quick little wave. Just look at me. You just received Jesus. Just look at me. Give me a quick little wave. You just accepted Jesus. Just look at me real quickly. Give me a quick little wave. 
Got you right there. Anybody else? Just look at me real quick. Gotcha. Everybody look at me. We had one person give their life to the Lord this morning. Can we give it up for Jesus? Man, I'm so excited about all that God's doing. I hope that you're encouraged and that we will increase our expectation. If you made a decision today, we'd love to know about it. You can text the number on the screen. And we'd love for you to take that next step and be water baptized. Well, I love y'all so much. Uh, hope you're encouraged. I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Candice. Thank you so much, Pastor Ryan. Can y'all give him another round of applause for that great message if you feel strengthened today? Well, I just want to say thank you again for joining us here at High Ridge this morning. We hope that you have felt blessed, that you've been encouraged, and we just uh, it's an honor that y'all chose that, to worship with us this weekend. Um, if you are new here, if you prayed with Pastor Ryan, or if you just want more information about stepping into community here at our church, we'd ask you to uh, reach into the seat back pocket in front of you, grab the Connect card and fill that out for us. You can drop those uh, in the offering boxes in the back, or you can hand it to our volunteer at our information center. This is the portion of the service where we get to continue in our act of worship through giving. And I just want to uh, remind you that our vision here at High Ridge is for you to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. And last weekend, um, because of your faithfulness and your giving and your obedience and tithing, we were able to host our very first kids' night of worship, which is an amazing experience. Um, we had kids that got to go in and have a specialized service just for them where they got to know more about God, why we worship him, and enjoy the night while y'all were in here getting filled up um, together while we're shaking together. So we just thank you for your obedience and tithing and pouring into the next generation. Um, there are four ways that you can give today. You can give online. You can give through our High Ridge app. You can drop it in the offering boxes or you can mail it in. Um, as always, there's lots of things going on in the life of our church and you can go online or to our app to uh, find out what's coming up or to register for any upcoming events. And I just want to highlight a couple of those for you today. Next weekend in kids' ministry, we have our Move Up Weekend. And what that is is if you have a child going into kindergarten, they'll be moving up to our elementary room uh, back in kids' ministry. And then if you have a sixth grader, they will be coming in here with you on Sunday mornings, and then they get to uh, graduate to our youth ministry, which happens on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Um, and so we just thank you for that. And um, we have also August 8th through the 11th, we have prayer and fasting at 6.30 p.m. every single evening. And that's just an intentional time where we get to come gather together, join in focused worship, prayer, and unity as we grow deeper in our faith and closer to God in our relationship. So 